All right. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Daniel Summerhays. Let's see. Oh, nice. yeah, I guess this is all right. So my name is Daniel Summerhays. I'm going to be talking to you all about paleontology. Paleontology. What is paleontology? Oh, goodness. OK, any guesses? What is paleontology? Okay. Fossils. Incorrect. The answer is fossils. Oh, wait, sorry. Um, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend some time uh, first talking about my own personal history with paleontology, like what is paleontology and why am I the person talking about paleontology? And then secondly, I'm going to walk you guys quickly through some of the science of paleontology. And it will be very quick because this is a lightning talk. So paleontology is the scientific study of life in the geologic past, especially through the study of animal and plant fossils. So we usually just key off that last word, fossils. Um, but it's scientific, it's a study, it's the past. I'll go into more of the science in a minute. Um, so first of all, I want to show you some of my own personal history of paleontology. This is a triceratops skull that is in the Red Path Museum. As you can see, it's in Montreal. Um, this is a photo that I took in uh, 2015, September 2015, when I was visiting the city for unrelated reasons. And I was just so taken by um, some of the fossils that I saw there. Um, these are you know, really big fossils. They're alien. They're foreign to our common experience. And they're all from a extinct species that died out literally millions of years ago. Um, this is a Gorgosaurus. Uh, like I said, it's not the greatest picture. It's kind of kind of dark, and the backlighting is a bit too strong. But uh, these are the ones that I took personally, so I didn't want to really use like stock photos for this. Um, and here's a picture of an oviraptor. Um, a lot I can say about that, but I won't because it's a lightning talk. Um, and lastly, this is a picture of the meteorite that wiped out the dinosaurs. Actually, this is called the KT boundary. And uh, it's uh, mark demarcated by a, uh, a layer of iridium, which is not commonly found in Earth's crust, but it's very commonly found in meteors. And this is some of the evidence that it was, in fact, a meteorite strike that killed the dinosaurs. So after all of that, this is sort of my introduction to paleontology. I saw these things, and I was just amazed. I was amazed at um, how, how fantastic it is, how different it is from our common experience and I wanted to know more. So I did the very first thing that any rational person would do, and I started reading every single Wikipedia article I could find. I read everything. <laughs> and I learned so much about it, and there's so much more that I did not learn. Actually, there's a lot to the science. Um, you take one of the fossils, like one of these guys, and every single body part, you can study it in detail and learn a lot about um, its behavior and its lifestyle and what it eats and how it lives and so on. And so after all of that, I went to the Field Museum. This is a picture of me and Sue. Um, Sue is a Tyrannosaurus rex fossil dating from the Cretaceous period, about 65 million years old. Um, I am a Homo sapien human uh, dating about 34 years old. Um, <laughs> and so you can see we have, we have a lot in common. Uh, we both have two arms, we both have the same number of bones, we have two legs. Um, a lot of the skeletal structure is quite similar. Um, here's some other fossils. These are bacterial remnants from 3.5 billion years old. Uh, years ago, it's called str str stromatolites. stromatolites. Um, these are some reptiles from the Permian. This is also a reptile from the Permian called an Adaphosaurus. Uh, it kind of looks like a guanodon, but it's different. This is a stegosaurus from the Jurassic. By the way, these are all from Chicago. These are from the Field Museum in Chicago on a separate trip. This is the lower half of a giant ground sloth, um, which is from the uh, Paleocene, I believe, about 10 million years old. This is the upper half of the giant ground sloth. It was big. It, it, takes, it takes quite a lot to photograph that thing. Um, this is um, a really famous fossil. This is called an Archaeopteryx. This is the first winged dinosaur that has been found. Um, it was discovered in the 19th century, and it was discovered around the time that Charles Darwin postulated the theory of evolution, and it was uh, one of the key fossils that provided what many people believe to be evidence for the theory of evolution because of its link between dinosaurs and modern birds. Now, uh, this is where it gets even more personal. These are some fossils that I actually found of my, uh, my, of my own. Um, these are from New York. Um, this is a fossil of crinoid stems that dates from uh, 
the, uh, the Devonian period, which is approximately 400 million years old. Um, the hand is also still 34 years old. But 400 million years, can you believe it? It's just just washes up on the shore from, uh, from uh, uh, runoff from a creek. Here's some other fossils. Well, the bottom one is the same fossil, but two other fossils from the same find. Uh, there's a mixture of um, some, what are they, uh, what are they called? Um, rhizoans. So there's some rhizoan. They're, they're kind of like uh, sponges, but, um, but extinct. Um, and then there's the crinoid stems. And there actually are still living crinoids in the world today. Uh, this is also a fossil from the same place. This is a fossilized shell of a bivalve. And here are some fossils that I found in Oregon. This is fossilized tree wood. So this is also from, uh, I believe this is from the, the Paleocene, or maybe it was the Neocene. Um, these are about 7 to 10 million years old. And you can see there's some cool pictures. It actually has a crystal embedded in the fossil matrix. This is actually one of the tree, uh, the fossilized wood uh, fragments I just showed. Um, and that's the light kind of shining through the fossil. Here's another one where it has the same effect um, because of quartz crystals embedded in the fossilized wood itself. Okay, so that was the, uh, the world tour of my own history of paleontology. And now here's a little bit about the science. So paleontology is a study of the history of life on Earth as based on fossils. So there's really three key words in this, history, life, and Earth. History is time. Paleontology is a study of time. There's, as I mentioned several times, there's millions and millions of years over which you can collect fossils. And the Earth, 20 million years ago, and the Earth, 40 million years ago, are very different places. And you know, 400 million years ago is much, much different than that. So the influence of time is unavoidable when you're studying uh, fossils and the history of fossils. The second is biology, that's from the word life, because a lot of what we're studying is the formation of life. It's, uh, it's living biological mechanics, it's understanding anatomy, and from anatomy we understand ecology, and from ecology we understand sort of what's happening in the world. The last word is, is the earth, and that's key, and that gives us geology. A lot of paleontology is actually the study of rocks, because you need to understand how the fossils are formed, how they're deposited, or the deposition of the fossils. Um, what is the climate of the earth at the time? And climate shapes life. Life is a particular way because we have a very pleasant climate. And it also shapes rocks, because when you have a lot of rain, you get different kinds of rocks. If it's dry, you have different kinds of rocks. Um, if it's underwater, if it's above water, if it's in a mountain, if it's eroded, all these different things influence rocks, but they also influence the formation of life at that time. So here's a fossil, uh, some fossilized skin, actually, of um, a hadrosaur. Um, now this is, again, kind of an example of how you can learn about life from fossils is that as you study the skin, for instance, or study different things about the animal's fossils, you can learn about how it lived. Actually, a picture I kind of wish I'd put up here would be a tooth, um, because a tooth is really the part of the fossil that I think teaches you more about an animal than anything else. Because in the teeth, we can learn about diet. From diet, we learn about behavior. And from behavior, you can learn about um, the world, you know, about how, how everything was happening. And about its, about its ecology, about other species that are alive at that time. This is a, a picture also from New York. Um, this is um, the uh, Genesee River Gorge uh, in Rochester. And in this, you've got about 20 million years of history. This, the rocks on that, uh, on that river gorge face date from around 410 million years ago to 430 million years ago. And uh, this is the geology component that I'm trying to show off. As you go through the rock layers, you can learn many different things um, about um, the environment and life in those different time periods. And so you combine that with our understanding of biology from the animal previously, and in the intersection of those two things, we learn about paleontology, we learn about modern life as well. Here's some random terms. I'm not really going to bother going through this. This is a whole bunch of different things that I was studying when I was going into paleontology. Uh, suffice it to say, the science is very complicated and there's a lot to it, so this is really only scratching the surface. So, to conclude, I want to ask the question what have I learned about God from studying fossils? And that might be an odd question to ask, it might not be the first thing to think about. But if you read Romans 1.20, it says that since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made. 
So that means that God's fingerprint is in the world. His, his invisible qualities are in the visible substrate that we exist in, eternal power and divine nature. So we can learn about God from looking at other people and understanding people, but we can also understand, uh, understand God by looking at um, the world itself, and part of that is fossils. So the first thing I learned is that God is strange. God is very strange. He is not, he, you know, in some ways, he, when you talk to people, you learn that God is like us. He's, God is familiar. God is, is comfortable. From studying fossils, I learned that God is strange. God is different. God is incomprehensible. God created this. Is that enough? <laughs> the little thing in the front, that's not called, that's its mouth. This is called a Tully a totally Monstrum Gregarian. Uh, also commonly known as the Tully Monster. Uh, that's the mouth right there in the front. There's two little stalks going off the side of his eyes, and this is a fish of some sort. It's awful. It's glorious. I don't, I don't even know what to say. It, uh, it's only found in one place in the whole world, which is Mason Creek, Illinois, and it's only ever found in one time period, which is the Carboniferous. We don't know where it came from. We don't know where it went. But that was it. But in that one place, they found dozens or hundreds of them. They haven't found it anywhere else. This is uh, a little bit more complicated. This is a picture of the Cambrian explosion, or Cambrian um, uh, uh, assemblage. And it's referring to a collection of species, all of which are now extinct, by the way, uh, that existed during the Cambrian period approximately 400 million years ago. Um, the crazy one that I want to point out in the upper left is Anomalocarus. Um, that's named after its bizarre uh, teeth. The second thing I learned is that God is big. Uh, God is enormous. He's so much larger than us. He creates things like this. Well, I'm trying to take a picture of it. This is also in Chicago. I'm trying to take a picture of this apatosaurus, and it's so big, I literally just can't even get it in one picture. Its head is about 15 feet above the top of the picture. Uh, and if I was standing next to it, I would barely get up to the to the to the knee bone. Here's another picture you can kind of see some people. This is in London. Um, I don't remember. I think it's a hadrosaur. Hadrosaur, probably from the from the maybe mid Cretaceous. It's about 75 million years old. Um, the hadrosaurus is also uh, from the Cretaceous, if I remember correctly. Um, and you can see people are just barely even getting half to the height of this thing. So these these dinosaurs or fossils are enormous. And that's it. Um, I actually have all those fossils I was showing you guys, but I forgot to bring them. So I feel awful. Rain check on that. I'll maybe bring the fossils like uh, some other time, and then you guys can also take a look at it. Thank you so much. Bye.